Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Floss Tube episode number seven. My name is Liz Matthews. My company is Hello from Liz Matthews, and I'm so excited to be spending this morning with you. It is October 12th, early in the morning. I've got lots of exciting things going on to share, um, and I'm just happy to be here. Thank you for tuning in so much. You guys have really embraced me in the Floss Tube community, and I don't think I'll ever stop saying how much I appreciate it and how happy I am to be here. I feel like I've connected with so many people, and I can't tell you how much that means to me. I've, I mean, you guys are my new friends, and I love that so, so much. I had a shout out this week from Teresa Kogut. I, I hope that I'm saying her name right, and I have been watching her for a while. She is a such a talented lady, does so much painting, punch needle, cross stitch, um, and I was happy that she found me and shouted me out. Um, thank you so much, Teresa. I love watching you, and I love how diverse you are, and I'll continue to tune in there. I also wanted to shout out one of my new friends, Steph, from St Stitch Goes My Heart. I found her video a couple weeks ago, and you know when you watch somebody, you just feel like you would connect in real life? That's how I felt with Steph. And she is part of this great community in the Pacific Northwest that, um, I don't wanna say it centers around acorns and thread, but that is like the gathering point. I think everybody flocks to acorns and thread, that shop that I know that you've heard about in Oregon. Um, and it seems to be that there's a great stitching community out there. And I so badly wish that I could fly out there, transport myself there and spend the afternoon with you ladies. Seems like you guys have so much fun. Believe it or not, I was actually with my mom at a stitching retreat there maybe, gosh, maybe 12 years ago. It was in, it was in Oregon, not far, obviously, from Acorns and Threads. Uh, they rented some cabins and mom taught and I just traveled alongside her. I remember going to places like Silver Falls, many, many waterfalls. It was gorgeous. It was my first time on the West Coast in the Pacific Northwest, I should say, and I absolutely loved it. In fact, we honeymooned there. We took two weeks and <clears throat> this was many years later. This was six years ago. So um, we honeymooned there. We flew into San Francisco, flew out of Seattle, and just had two weeks to wind our way through the Pacific Northwest. Absolutely loved it, but that's just getting off on a tangent there but i just want to say hey steph and all of you ladies out there it looks like you guys have so much fun hopefully we can start to build that sort of tribe or i can discover i'm not saying it doesn't already exist maybe we can build it maybe i can find it here in the mid east coast i need more coffee I'm in Maryland, if anybody doesn't know, I'm in Maryland and I would love to find some stitching groups here to join to build a little East Coast community with. So I'm leaving today. I'm leaving today for a Viking cruise, a Viking River cruise through Southern France. Our flight is at 5.30 p.m. tonight. We'll fly overnight through Amsterdam into Marseille and spend 10 days cruising the rivers of France. I am so beyond excited. I feel like my life has been list and like checking things off, trying to get ready for this trip. And I can now, excuse me, finally just be excited about this whirlwind adventure. I can't even believe we're doing it. I'm taking this trip with Mare, who is my stepmom. Um, it's just she and I doing this cruise. I have this like little brochure. We're doing things like wine tasting, walking tours through these ancient cities. We're taking a steam engine trip to a part of France that isn't accessible by roads or anything. You can only get there by steam engine and we're going. We're doing a painting class where Van Gogh painted. It's just, I am so beyond excited and I'll be sharing all of it over on Instagram where I am probably most active. If you wanna follow along, it's hello from Liz Matthews, that's my handle. And I'm gonna be sharing the whole adventure with you. I, I can't wait, travel is just one of the things I absolutely love. I could talk about it all day um, along with punch needle, which we'll get into now because maybe that's why you're here. Um, I did also want to just give a big thank you to Abby from Top Knot Stitcher. When I first started doing Floss Tube, you may remember I was like, what are these needle minders? These cute, sweet little things that everybody has on their work. And she messaged me and told me what they are. And she actually has a shop 
So this week, the sweetest little package arrived from Abby, vintage postcard of San Francisco, one of my favorite cities, we just talked about that, and um, two little needle minders. She sent me a Constellation needle minder, and also look at this sweet Victorian rose needle minder. Now, I don't think I can use these with punch needle, but I can certainly use them for other things. Isn't that just the cutest, sorry, gotta learn this focus. Thing. But thank you so much, Abby. You are, are definitely starting a collection, like you said. I appreciate you sending those to me so, so much, and I love them. If you're interested, Abby's shop is Top Knot Stitcher. I'll put it in the description box below if you want to go see what she has. So many needle minders. I didn't realize this was such a big thing, but if you're in the market, go give her a check out. It's Top Knot let me get this right. Topknotstitchershop.etsy.com. That's where you can find her. And like I said, I will link it below. But I am so happy to have these. Sorry. <laughs> I'm facing out the backyard and I just saw a fox run by the window, which is so cool. We have deer, we have fox, we have chipmunk squirrels, birds, and I love watching them all now from the new pergola. But Sorry, that was distracting and I kind of want him to come back. Okay, moving on. Um, as Moving on, let's talk about the winner of last week's giveaway. Let me grab this chart. <laughs> Let me preface this also by saying I'm so sorry that I will not be able to ship this until I get back. But I have a hunch that this would not be able to be completed before Halloween anyway. I think this will probably get added to somebody's stash as a 2020 Halloween chart. But this week we were giving away Halloween at Hawk Rock Hollow donated by my mom and aunt who now runs Carriage House Samplings. But look at this chart. I just love it. Every time I look at it, I find something new that I love. It is just fabulous so let me leave this here while i announce that the winner of this chart through the random number generator is sherry ward congratulations sherry if you email me i haven't been doing this right but i have figured it out if you email me at my email address listed in the description box below i will get this off to you just as soon as i get back and maybe a little goodie from france we'll see um but congratulations this is a doozy of a chart and i'm happy to send it to you can't wait to see what you do with it good luck to you uh let's see is there a stitch count on this 371 wide by 278 high it's a big guy happy stitching sherry um what else? I'm trying to say um less, but it's just slipping out. I don't think I'm fully awake yet. I need some more coffee. Okay, so I wanted to do two more things. I wanted to answer some questions about my last set of videos I did that were, I guess not my last ones, but the tutorials I did for the punch needle, the tutorial, the punch needle tutorials I did. Um, yeah, there were some questions that I wanted to answer. And then I also wanted to show you what I'm packing and bringing with me on vacation as far as needlework goes, because you know that I can't be without. I've got a busy schedule of releases I wanna to stick to. So I have packed some items and let's go ahead and do that now before I, I'll wrap up the video with answering your questions. But this is what I'm bringing with me in my suitcase. I bought one of these plastic travel cases because it's just, it's flat, it's easy, it's condensed, protective. Um, and I am bringing the supplies with me for three projects. That might be ambitious, but I have high hopes and I'm a pretty fast puncher. So in this case, you have weaver's cloth. I have my bags of DMC. These projects will be done with DMC because it just was easier to get in time for my trip. You can see the palettes there, the color palettes there. Sorry, a little bit reflective, but I have three bags of floss in here. I also have my patterns. I have two transfer pens because I'll have to transfer my pattern to the weaver's cloth. Little scissors, 
punch needle. I thought long and hard about putting this in my carry-on, but part of me was like, if TSA thinks this is a weapon and they take it from me, I am gonna be up a creek. So I've ultimately decided to put this under the plane. It won't be in my carry-on, I won't be punching on the plane, which I had kind of decided not to do anyway because as you saw in those tutorials, maybe, um, it's a little bit loud. There's a popping sound that happens every time you make a loop and I don't wanna be distracting or annoying to other passengers on the plane, especially because we're gonna be trying to sleep. Hopefully I'm sleeping, I have the worst record of getting shut eye on a plane because I'm a, a little bit of a nervous flyer. So anyway, all that to say, this is going under the plane. I have two needle threaders and one spool of metallic thread that I might be trying in this next set of patterns. We'll see. But this is a great way to travel. Nice, compact, it's all in here. There's also, since we're going through it, I have a vintage blank ledger book because I like to journal and keep little snippets of the trip when I'm abroad or, or anywhere. Um, so I have some washi tape and a blank ledger book so I can make notes and journal and record this amazing adventure. So that's all in this little flat box, which will go in my suitcase. And it's a great way to keep all of your needle art stuff with you if you might in fact be traveling in the future too. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I wanna say it was $5.99. So if you see one of those, pick them up, you might be happy you have it in the future. So that's what's in my travel case. And it kind of brings me to the set of questions you guys asked about the punch needle tutorials I did. One of the biggest ones I got was how to transfer your pattern to your weaver's cloth. And the impression I have is that it's a little bit daunting for people and it shouldn't be. It's super easy. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that now. Super, super quick and easy. I didn't wanna show you my new patterns because I wanted it to be a big surprise when I released them, but you're gonna see it. So happy early surprise. Uh, what you're gonna need to do is stretch your weaver's cloth on whatever you're using, a frame, a hoop. This is the size hoop I'm bringing with the three pieces of weaver's cloth, a separate piece for every project. And I've gone ahead and stretched this one. You can hear that drum tightness that I talked about. That's super necessary. Here is a pattern. Here it is, here's one. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing with it, but. Okay, so here's a pattern. Oh, a little bird just popped up at the window. I feel like Cinderella in here. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted today, but it's adorable. Um, anyway, here's a pattern. You're gonna need tape. Just regular, old, any type of tape. So grab your pre-stretched cloth and you are going to tape your pattern to the underneath. This is the side with the lip. You're gonna tape it back here. Let me do that real quick. You're just gonna have to sit tight for a minute. I'm just gonna tape this piece on all three corners. Tape however much you need to get that piece of paper secure on your fabric. You do not want it to be moving. So however much you need, I'll do a couple extra here. Okay, so I've got it taped in one, two, three, four, five spots on the back of my hoop. And then this is where I think people get a little overwhelmed. You can see part of my, you can see my pattern showing through here. You have two options. You can take this to a window and it'll be really easy to see your pattern through. But if you look, it's really easy right here in my dark cavernous room to see that pattern. As long as you are holding your piece of paper tight to your weaver's cloth, it's pretty easy to see. If it's pulled back just a little bit, like look right here. If it's pulled back just a little bit, it's a bit harder to see. But if you just make sure that those layers are nice and tightly together, it's really easy. It's really easy to see and transfer. So we are now to the transfer process. You have two choices. I believe a lot of people will grab a really fine tip Sharpie and trace with that, one of these. 
and I have done that in the past. It works great. Just make sure your Sharpie is a pretty fine tip. This works great because when you punch, you are covering everything up. I actually prefer to use one of these water soluble pens. I ordered mine on Etsy. You can get them in any big box craft store. It's a water erasable marker. Sometimes I change my mind about things. Sometimes I don't like the placement, whatever. You just spray some water, spritz some water, use water on a paper towel and dab and that line disappears. I, this is just my preference. Preference. It is pure preference. My mom traces everything with a Sharpie. It's her preference. So all you're going to do now, this is pretty self-explanatory, I think, is use your hand on the underneath to make sure that those two layers are nice and tight, tightly together like we talked about, and you trace, and that's it. Easy peasy. If you were to take this to a window, you would see even more clearly. I just like to do things, I don't know, the easiest way possible. You may prefer tracing in a window, but I'm usually honestly working late at night, early in the morning when the sun hasn't come up, and just know that you don't need bright sunlight to do your transfer. It certainly does make things easier, but you don't need it. And I also have a lighted board. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, I shared it a few videos back. It's just an illuminating pad and I can use that sometimes as well. But honestly, you don't have to. Don't make the process harder than it needs to be um, and don't give yourself excuses not to try punch needle. You can see it's a pretty easy, pretty easy thing. I'll just go in and trace now. But I have found that I prefer tracing my design with my fabric stretched. I don't think that's a hard and fast rule. I think this is a preference. I like to have it stretched before I trace. My mom does not. She will lay everything flat because she works really big. Her latest piece is 11 by 17 inches. There's no way you're stretching that on a frame. So I think as long as your weaver's cloth is flat, which it should probably be when it arrives to you. Don't buy from a place that sends it wrinkly. As long as you have a flat piece that you can lay down um, or tape flat to a window, you are good to go. So if you're working really large like my mom does, the window method might be better because it's not gonna fit in a hoop. Just make sure everything's nice and flat and sandwiched tightly together. So that's that. Um, some other questions I got in my tutorial was how many strands of thread do I normally use? I always punch with six strands, whether I'm using DMC or Weak Dye Works, and those are the only two threads that I've ever punched with, but I use all six with a medium tip needle. It should flow through pretty smoothly. It's what I've always used and I guess recommend. Now I know Valdini thread, which is also really popular for punching, is thinner and I wanna say it's only three strands of embroidery floss wound together. So it's a much smaller, finer look. It's really beautiful. I've never worked with it, but you would still use a medium size needle tip with that as well. And I do know that some people will go in and separate their Weeks Dye Works threads or DMC threads because they just prefer working with a thinner section of floss. So they would do three versus the six that I use and that's personal preference. So if you wanna take the time to separate and like the flow of that in your needle better, have that. I just have always had no patience if I'm being real and just get started and it works really well. I like the thick density that it brings to my punching. The other question I saw a couple times was, what do you do with the ends of your thread? So, not quite prepared. So let me show you the back of this work in progress that has not gotten anywhere since the last time I showed you. Um, you can see here, I have a couple tails. So I just kind of leave them floating in the back. I snip them to be what is that? Maybe a quarter of an inch long. I don't like them to be too, too terribly long because you have a chance of 
pulling it and ripping your punches out. But the backs of my projects tend to look a little nesty and with a lot of extra little threads running around. You can trim them to be flush. I see that a lot of people do that. When I was watching other tutorials in preparation for mine, I saw a lot of people who recommend cutting it flush to the back of your piece. That's just not what I do, but you could. Basically, what I recommend is that you not have long, long, long tails on the back because you do risk grabbing that and pulling your stitches out. So I would just do a light trim. Now, sometimes when you're punching your thread, it just ends up ending on the front, like you run out of your length on the front of your punched piece, and that's fine as well. All you do is grab a little, do I have any? Oh, right here. All you do is grab a little pair of embroidery scissors, which I have here, and I cut, <laughs> best filming ever, and I trim to be flush and even and parallel with the rest of my piece. I know that was out of focus, I'm so sorry, but you guys, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. You just trim it, you just trim it from the front nice and flush with the rest of your loops so it's like an even little carpet of happiness and keep on going so those were the big questions i got keep sending them to me i will have kind of spotty responses i get wi-fi on the boat but i don't know how good it's going to be and i don't know how consistent it's going to be but i will try to respond um, to all of your questions. I am so happy and so glad that so many of you messaged me and said you feel comfortable getting started now. That is awesome. Let me know how it's going. Share pictures. I hope you love it. I hope you find it the perfect addition to cross stitch and let me know if I can help with anything. Let's see. I think that's really all I wanted to go over. I have notes here. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't have any finishes. I have a consistent whip, and you can see that I started gathering everything I need for my next projects. I don't know why I decided not to bring this to France. I think it's because I punch it on the gripper frame that I showed, and that is just too big and bulky to bring with me, so I needed more compact hoop-like projects. So that's what I have. Um, so this is a continual whip. I'll get back to it when I get home and I will release it then. My shop is staying open because my mom is amazing and will be shipping out all of my patterns and orders when I'm gone. Thank you so, so much, mom. I hated the idea of having to close down shop while I was away. So orders will still ship. They'll be shipping from Pennsylvania, not Maryland. Thank you, thank you, thank you, mom. Um, and I think that wraps it up for me kind of a non-traditional floss tube but i just wanted to say goodbye and thank you all so much for tuning in i hope that you wander over to instagram shoot me a message so we can connect that way i hope you guys have a great week i will be back on floss tube in probably two weeks with a full recap of my trip but i hope you have a great week weekend punching stitching doing all the needle crafts and just have a great time i will talk to you later bye